Welcome to the Intentional Encourager podcast, where each episode brings you compelling conversations and stories designed to entertain, enlighten, and encourage. And now here's your host, Brian Sexton. And welcome into the Intentional Encourager podcast. I'm your host, Brian Sexton. Thank you for joining us again today. Do you want to turn passion into money and dreams into reality? If you do, you buckle up. We are going to have a fantastic conversation with coach, trainer, entrepreneur, builder extraordinaire. You can find her on LinkedIn at Tammy Collins, C-O-L-L-I-N-S, but you can find her right here right now on the Intentional Encourager podcast. Tammy, how are you today? Hi, Brian. I'm so good. Thank you for having me. I am so glad that you're here today. It is an honor to have you. Let's start here. Okay. I, I've been asking people, and, and again, as we record this, it feels like we're we're kind of slipping back into some things around COVID. Um, what is the last 16 or 17 months been like for you personally and professionally and i start here because everybody is different yeah. i live in west virginia you're in tennessee i love tennessee but it's different in different places so what's the last 16 15 16 months been like for you uh really quite the crazy roller coaster ride um you know sometimes it's a little bit um hard to believe really i mean during that time, I've been able to thrive. And uh, in the beginning, I really felt guilty for talking about it in that way because there are so many people that suffered or, or had really bad experiences throughout that time. Uh, but for me, it's been an amazing blessing, really. Uh, we were able to, uh, essentially, we talk about it as taking a, a leap of faith. We, we jumped off a cliff. And we're building a parachute on the way down. Now, ironically, that has led us to purchasing a mountain and literally living on a cliff. <laughs> you purchased a mountain? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't, that sounds a bit strange, right? But um, we, we bought uh, 30 acres, and it's uh, basically a huge portion of this mountain. So we have, like... The, the pinnacle point of the mountain and um you could have came to west virginia and bought one for like five bucks you know that right <laughs> i mean we've yeah. gotten mountains everywhere you could have bought one for literally next to nothing i mean yeah. really you could have yeah we did pretty good though so i, I don't know <laughs> um but yeah you know the the situation with covid so backing up a little bit my husband worked in retail his whole life as a senior manager and it had become a space that was just really horrific. And I know that sounds a bit of an exaggeration, but it's not. He was miserable. I was watching him die a little bit each day. He was sort of being mentally um, abused, kind of literally. Uh, customers, it was just an awful situation. And so when COVID hit in New Jersey at the time where we lived, it was a different animal. So some states, it didn't really impact day-to-day -day life but mm -hmm. over there it was suddenly a new world and you know to have customers screaming at you and you know just it was just a horrific situation and he was really psychologically beat down and it was beginning to affect his health and I said to him I said you know we have talked about doing some things our whole lives I said I think it's time to do that and uh, we need to take a leap of faith and just do it and that's what we did. Yeah, you, you know, you mentioned that, and and it's and it's funny because and it's not funny, funny. And uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, we've got some camera issues, so I apologize for my Zapruder-like grainy video. But Tammy mm -hmm. is nice and clear. That's what's important. But Tammy, you mentioned the the impact on people in the retail space, and we saw that here in West Virginia because. One day you could go into a store without wearing a mask. The next day you had to wear a mask. You had to social distance. They were only letting so many people in the store. You, you really felt for people in retail. 
And not only that, but people were like, well, forget this. We'll just go and buy everything online. And the retailers, you know, their, their profits were shrinking and things like that. How were you able to help coach your husband through that? Because you have your formal training. You work with clients every day that are facing challenges in their own business. But this challenge was right in your own house. How yeah. did you how did you manage that? And were you able to separate that personal and professional? Because a lot of times it's hard for people to do that. You want to be there all there for your your husband or wife, or you know, or, or, or for my case, my wife. And you want to go, well, let, let's sit down and talk through this professionally. But there's the personal component as well. Forgive me for that long-winded question, but was it hard for you to separate helping him as best as you could as his wife versus what you know to do professionally? Well, you know, in some ways, yes, but overall, no, because that's actually one of my superpowers, right? My ability to sort of know what needs to be done and recognize how to make the moves and put the uh, action steps into place and go forward, right? So going back a little bit, you have to understand some of the back history. I, I did a major transformation of my life. And that process that I did, he watched unfold. I literally transformed every area of my life and one by one accomplished everything I ever desired or set out to do. And so he watched that take place. And then he watched me implement that with customers and clients. So, you know, he sort of was aware of like, look at what she's doing. Yeah. Uh, but then there was that piece where, you know, he, he, he was sort of coming from it of a mindset that he was sort of taught I'm the provider this, you know, I have children so forth and so on. And finally, one day I remember this pivotal conversation. I said to him, I would rather live in a van down by the river, poor and broke than to watch you die a little bit every day. And I said to him, I said, your responsibility as wearing that hat as the provider is done. Our kids have graduated college. They are adults and you can hang up that weight that you've been carrying. You can hang it up now. It's time for you to do something you want to do that you are passionate about. Yeah. The rest will figure it all out. We're smart, educated individuals. We'll figure it all out. And, and I remember sort of the moment, you know, there was, it was right before COVID hit, actually, he had started looking for and applying for jobs and had several interviews lined up in Tennessee. And of course, when COVID hit, that fell apart. But I remember for Christmas, he bought me a t-shirt that was basically just the Tennessee flag. And that was his way of saying to me, I'm all in. And that was it. So from there on out, it was a plan of how do we get out? And now, of course, all of these crazy things happened in the interim, right? So there was a point where we lost almost all of our 401k. So thankfully, I had been doing so well and actually, despite COVID, had seen increases in my business. So basically, I said, you know, you don't need to be that provider anymore. I can fulfill that role. So basically, we, I re just basically retired him and we just moved followed our dream and mind you i have to point out we had never been to tennessee before <laughs> it was just something that i was getting signals messages if you will over and over and over and over again in my face every day probably for three years and uh, i said i don't know why but this is where we need to go and i've well, had several situations in my life where i listened to that message that were profound and so we just we just listened to it I love that listening to pro and I'm writing this down, listening yeah. to profound messages yeah. in our lives, because Tammy, the, the thing is for a lot of people, it's scary to make a move anyway, mm -hmm. to uproot everything, you know, the comforts of being where you've been for a long time yeah. and just going, we've never been to this state even for a visit or a vacation, but now we're going to make our home here. And now we're going to do those things. When you think about that step that you took, what major mental hurdle did you guys have to overcome? Because everybody has to overcome 
some hurdle. We're going to chase a dream. Yes. We're excited. Yes. How do we get a driver's license in Tennessee? How do we get, how do we find a place to live? You know, how do we, you know, how do we transfer our vehicles and things like that? There are those logistical things that anytime you move, you have to make, okay, you know, our bills, you know, we, everybody, how do we set up, how do we set up electric in Tennessee? How do we set it? And then you go and buy a mountain. Were there over those times that you kind of had to push yourself past some of those questions of, yeah, we're excited. We've got a purpose. We know what we're going to do, but the logistical part still has to be done. Were there times you guys had to push each other through those things? Oh, for sure. For sure. So, so I'm a massive problem solver. solver. I'm never intimidated by the unknown, right? So I, I've lived outside of the box. I take risks. Uh, I, I know that I will be given or shown or find an answer to any problem that I encounter. So that, that wasn't as big of an issue for me as it was for my husband. So when we were looking for land, his challenge was understanding how does this how does a house go here? How do we do this here? He had a yeah. lot more difficulty in that space and, you know, trying to sort of trust that. Let me jump in there real quick. Yeah. And, and and let's, I want to extrapolate a little bit more out of that because I love what you just said there. You've always been someone who's thought outside the box. And that has been so clear. That particular saying has been so cliched for so many years, yeah. right? We got to get people thinking outside the box. Even Taco Bell did some marketing around that. Think it, you know, think outside the box. And, and I used to, when I would recruit high school students many years ago for college, I would use an illustration of I would I would um, I would use someone and I would put them in a box, and I would just begin to throw things at them because a lot of people inside the box is comfortable, inside the box is safe. Inside the box is shelter. Right. When you talk about being a, let, let's go back just a second, because I want to park on what you said about being a massive problem solver. Right. Why do you think most people have a problem being a problem solver? Uh, because of their preconceived ideologies, right? In other words, what, what their mind only knows, right? So, so here's a great example. We didn't know what our home would look like here. What do I mean by that? We had purchased the land and had no idea. Are we building? Uh, we talked about lots of different options. We talked about buying a travel trailer and just being here temporarily till we could understand the land and what we were going to do here. Um, but I had faith. I asked for answers and they were given to me. You know, we ended up coming, a it's a very long story, but we ended up coming across tiny house not just one but two which at the time didn't seem like a big deal but it actually was the solution and it was also a big piece to our long-term dream the bigger picture that we were trying to execute it just came to us right so you know you have to be open you have to have faith you have to ask for what you want and uh it will appear it, it's being open to that so the box, the proverbial box, is people that can't see that maybe there's another way, that can't see that you need to have faith and just trust. I believe that the box is the limitations that have been put on you by society and life, right? So, for example, you grow up in the mindset that your parents taught you, in the mindset that the school has taught you, in the mindset that your community has taught you. That creates your box, so yeah. for most people, they just stay right inside of that box. And for me, when you step outside of that box is when you start to challenge those ideals and you start to say, there's another way. There's another way to do this. I, you know, I just wrote an article that, that I'm thinking about publishing called The New American Dream, right? The American Dream was something we were, that was put upon us, right? You do this, you, you go to school, you go to college, you, go, you get married, you have a house, you have a family. That's a preconceived box that you're, that's put upon you. And we're taught that's the American dream. And I believe there's a new American dream, but that's a whole other subject. No, no, no let's, <laughs> let's, let's, um, no, I, I love that. Let's step aside, take a quick break. 
Yeah. And when we come back, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the new American dream because I want to pull some more conversation out of that. I love that the new American dream, and we're also going to talk about what she does to help people turn passion into money. I'm all in, I, I'm, I'm interested <laughs> in that. I want to know more about that. My guest Tammy Collins joining me today on the Intentional Encourager podcast. Back in just a moment. Hey everybody, Brian Sexton here. I want to tell you about our sponsor, SEO National. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Now, what's that, you might say? Well, Search Engine Optimization helps you show up higher on search engines in front of paying customers for words that you as a business owner can monetize. What a great concept. SEO National is owned by my good buddy, Damon Burton, who's been a guest here on the Intentional Encourager podcast. Not only has Damon and his team worked with businesses of all sizes, from e-commerce startups to NBA teams and Shark Tank featured businesses, but more importantly, Damon and his team are about transparency, trust, and providing lifetime value. So much so that he still has his first customers after opening SEO National 14 years ago. Let me give you some intentional encouragement and call Damon and his team today at 855-736-6285 or go to www.seonational.com and get a free quote. Tammy, let's go here for just a second. Before we took a break, we talked about the new American dream. Okay, so for you, let's refresh folks that 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 we would talk about in, in air quotes, the American dream is a good job, house, car, family, white picket fence, life is great, things are wonderful, the American dream. Or for some people that come to the United States, it is the the opportunity to do something that they haven't been able to do previously in their home countries. So that, that if, if I've left something out, let me know, but, but define your version of the new American dream. Well, actually it's very closely aligned to to the, the mindset of the people that come here from another country, right? They're looking for the opportunity to do something outside of the box that they were put in. Right. So they're, so they're coming in already stepping outside of the box, right? It's the, it's the, 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 the existing, uh, people here that stay inside the box of what is comfortable to them, right? They just sort of become a wheel in the cog doing the day-to-day motions. And they're not really ever saying, what is it that I want? What do I want to do? What am I here to do? And, and what what's going to really make me thrive instead of just living my life day-to-day surviving? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, and, and again, and, and I apologize, we've run into some more technical difficulties. We'll try to fix it. It's hard to fix them on the fly, but um, it won't affect the audio quality if you're listening on audio version. If you're watching on YouTube, you, you're seeing a couple of different things here. But I love what you said there about people thinking outside the box, again, in, in, in further defining that. Because here's what what I see when people come to the United States, Tammy. They come to the U.S. for the first time. There is no box. Right. Because what happens is, is they're like, well, America is this land of opportunity. And they see and hear things that just, that they just go, I'm all in. They just, they throw, you know, using the analogy, pushing all their chips into the middle of the table. Right. And they go, whatever it costs, whatever I have to do, I'm going to get there. I'm going to make it happen. Why is it easier for people that come to this country knowing nothing about our culture to do that, but it's hard for people that have grown up here all their lives to have that same concept within them? Because the ideals weren't put in place, right? So so when you grow up here, you're, you're under the impression, you're taught to believe that uh, buying a home, getting a mortgage, and going down that road is the normal when really that's just a marketing scheme. <laughs> you know, uh, we are taught to borrow and have the latest, greatest, newest 
whatever that is, right? Whether it's the brand new iPhone, the brand new car, whatever those things are, right? It's all about materialistic things. And we are taught to just continually get them and get them at any cost, meaning you can borrow the money, you can take it on payments, you could take a loan. It, it's, it's a wrong mindset and it's one that's been crammed down us to follow and believe. Well, they come here without that. Well, and, and again, I, I love what you said about the the market, the the way the American dream has been marketed, mm-hmm. and and things like that. So let's shift for just a minute to now the entrepreneurs that you work with, because I think a lot of people have fallen in love with the misconception of we're just going to launch an app or we're going to open a business or we're just going to turn a key and untold riches, fame, and fortune are going to come our way. How do we, yeah, how do we, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. The the, the build it and they will show up mentality. Yeah, it's the field of dreams, man. the old movie Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. Uh, I work on attraction marketing, which some people like to say that is that mindset, but it's actually not. So attraction marketing is making sure that you are clear on your branding and your messaging and what it is you offer, how it's packaged, packaged, who it's for, and what problem it solves or what solution it provides. If you do those things well, the people that it resonates with will literally come to you. That's different than the bill that they will show up, right? You you are carefully crafting and making sure that you are dialed in on what it is you do. Once you have that clearly defined and presented well, people will find you. We live in an age where everything is social, right? So once you're putting out there what you do, people will show up. Um, I've tested this theory and I've done this theory in multiple ways. And I'll give you an example of how I've tested it. My website is literally my picture and my calendar. It does not say a thing about what I do. I did that originally as a beta test. It has been up for actually August will be two years that way. And I'm wildly successful. So, <laughs> well, here's here's the thing that I love, and I went to your website this morning in, in preparation for our time together. And what I love about your website is just that it is not a sales pitch. It is don't it is work with me because I'm brilliant. Work with me because I do this and that. Now you tell people what you do. But but it's not, you're looking first. And I said this, I, Tammy, I, I said this in my book, People Buy From People. And, and I've stuck by this mantra. People buy connection before they ever make a transaction. That's right. And, and so what what you see is, this is me. I'm Tammy. If you want to work with somebody that's going to do something differently to help your business succeed, let's have a conversation. And I love the fact about your website, you mentioned your calendar, okay? I love that because what you're doing is inviting a conversation. You're not selling anything. You're inviting a conversation. What was it in your thought process as you were setting that up that made you go there? Because the the natural thought process would be, I've got to tell people what I do. I got to show people what I do. And you went the other way. What made you decide to do that? Because I, again, I'm outside of the box, right? I I don't want to put any preconceived messaging on people. I want people to meet me authentically and have a conversation with me and understand what it is I do. But more importantly, I'm interviewing them, right? I want the opportunity to interview my clients before I decide whether or not I want to work with them. So it's a two-way street. It's not just about them understanding if they want to work with me. It's equally as much me deciding if I want to work with them. Ooh, I love that. I, I got to go here for just a minute. Okay. Yeah. You have said something really profound and powerful mm-hmm. because a lot of people and a lot of salespeople, it takes them a long time to learn that there are some pieces of business that aren't good business. 
right. And you, you, I love what you said there, folks. I, I'm going to rewind that for you. Yeah. She interviews her clients, right? Not the other way around. She doesn't go seeking people to work with and saying, work with me. And listen, there's nothing wrong with marketing. There's nothing wrong with telling people what you do. I love that approach about interviewing her clients. What are some things that you've learned in that process that were V8 moments for you? Like, oh boy, I've really hit on something that's powerful for me and my business. So, so, okay. Uh, I... I like to think of myself more as a mentor and I, when, when someone's coming to me, being an entrepreneur, by the way, is not for the faint of heart, right? It's a lot of people have this glorious, grandiose, so I'm going to live a laptop lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. But, <laughs> a laptop lifestyle. I love it. Right. But the truth of the matter is to be an entrepreneur takes grit and stamina like nobody knows. And it is not an easy road and not everyone can do that. So there's a lot of people that think, oh, I'm just going to do this. And they have no idea what they're getting into. But more importantly, there are some mindset issues that have to be corrected before they can take that path. So when I'm interviewing them, I'm deciding, do you still have mindset issues that you need to fix? Are you actually ready to get on this roller coaster or are you, do you need to go see like a personal coach first? Mm -hmm. And so that's been a big eye-opening experience. I do not take every client that comes to me. I just don't. Um, and that's important. I pick and choose who I work with. And that's important. Most people operate on, I'm just taking every client that comes to me and says, yes, that's the wrong approach. No, 100% agree because, again, when you just take anybody, then what that's what you're telling people is, I just take anybody. And, and there's no value to them in working with you because if you just take everybody, and there's a difference, and, and let me, and, and I'll go here, and I want to get your thoughts on this. There is a difference in not taking everybody because – Tammy, I think, again, we've gotten the wrong misconception of what connection truly is. Everybody wants to connect, you know, you know, follow me on Twitter, or follow me on Facebook, or follow me on LinkedIn, or, or connect with me. And, and we, we collect people and not, we don't, we collect instead of connect. And, and your friend of mine, Kristen Sherry, told me that a couple of years ago. Kristen said, there are people out there that want to connect with you that collect people. They don't want to connect. They want to collect. And I love that because a lot of businesses want to collect a lot of customers and they want to attract a lot of customers, but there are customers that aren't good for them. What have you seen? And I'll ask you this and we'll step aside and take a break. What's been the most powerful transformation in your business by flipping that mindset? and saying, I'm only going to work with people that I want to work with. What kind of powerful revelation or transformation has happened in your business from that? Well, for me, I came into my business doing that with that mentality. So, you know, it wasn't like I was doing it wrong in the first place. But I can tell you this, when I was uh, given the opportunity to be a marketing director for a builder that I worked for, there was a prime example that happened there. Uh, he had built a fabulous company. Um, but his branding didn't align with the new clientele, if you will. So to make a long story short, he provided top quality work, top quality. So he was attracting sort of an upper echelon client, but he had built his business on servicing anyone that would hire him. So what was happening is his brand was confused. And so he would get people that called him out. And then when he delivered the price, they couldn't afford him. And so this actually hurt his business because they were upset and insulted, right? So one of the first things I did in that role was explain to him that you needed to, to transform your brand and make sure that it aligned with the audience you wanted. You no longer want every client. And that was a really hard place for me to be in that position. And this is where the beasting that I've been coined with came about because I'm telling you the truth 
whether you're going to love me or hate me for it. You need to know that truth. And he kind of fought me at first and then ultimately realized I was right and actually said, I have been through probably three dozen marketing professionals in my career and no one has ever mentioned branding to me. And really that was his whole struggle and why he was constantly going through marketing people and constantly couldn't get the results that he wanted. He was chasing sort of all over the place instead of dialing in on who his customer was and aligning the brand and service to match. And so once that happened, he grew exponentially, opened another office and so forth and so on. And that was sort of an epiphany moment for me and realizing why my long and winding path was so diverse. I was really practicing, crafting, taking ideas and concepts and putting them into motion. And I did not see that for so long and spent so much of my life going, what's wrong with me? <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a good thing because, again, not and – and I think about Baskin-Robbins, ice cream. We'll step aside take a break here in just a moment. But that's why they have 31 flavors because not everybody likes chocolate. Not everybody likes vanilla. Not everybody That's likes right. strawberry. That's right. You know, they, they have all these different flavors. And guess what? You can mix flavors. I like mint chocolate chip and, and you know, maybe I'm in the mood for strawberry and chocolate together or, or cookie dough and brownie together, you know, things like that. And so that's why there's a variety of flavors so you can choose what's right for you. I love that. Yeah. Let's step aside, take another break. When we come back, we're going to tell Tammy's story. We're going to find out more about the tiny house on the Tennessee mountain. I'm dying to find out more about those, the two tiny houses on the Tennessee mountain. She alluded to it a moment ago, but we're going to get deeper into her story. Come back with us here. My guest, Tammy Collins on the intentional encourager podcast back in a moment. Hey everybody, Brian Sexton. I want to tell you about my new book, People Buy From People. 10 Powerful People Lessons from the Ultimate People Person, my dad. My dad was one of the greatest connectors that I ever knew. And he shared with me 10 connecting principles that I have used throughout my 25-year sales and sales management, customer engagement, and leadership career that I'm passing along to you. If you want to be a stronger deeper and more powerful connector you've got to pick up a copy of people buy from people there are concepts in there that you may not realize help make you a power connector you can go to amazon and pick it up kindle if you're an e-reader and you like to do it that way or now available on audible and there's one other way you can get a copy of people buy from people you can get one from me and i'll sign it for you you go to intentional media and publishing at gmail.com and send me an email and I'll share with you the link on how you can get a signed copy. You can buy a signed copy directly from me. Again, people buy from people. If you want to connect like never before, pick up your copy today of people buy from people. And now let's get back to more great conversation here on the Intentional Encourager podcast. Tammy, let's get into your story. You alluded to briefly about your move to Tennessee and from, from the state of New Jersey, but take me back as far as you want to go from point A to point B and, and just take me as far back and just, I want to know more about your life and your story. Wow. Um, I decided uh, that I was tired of being tired. I was tired of being kept in a box of what people expected from me and I wanted to change. And I realized that the only way that was going to happen was if I changed it. And so I put in a process and a methodical step-by-step -step process to change every area of my life, which is now a product that I'm getting ready to launch called live your passion. Um, because during doing work with, branding and marketing, I realized that a lot of people are in a place that they're not really ready to do that yet. And that's where the live your passion solves that problem. And um, so I did that. I did that on myself. And what that did was while I was being a full-time marketing director, I went back to school full-time and I launched my business 
and I began changing every single thing about my life. And um, we decided, we, I've had a vision for a very long time of an experiential place that encompasses so many aspects. And whenever I talked about this in the past, I would kind of get these blank stares. And I used to think it was because I was kind of crazy. Like, what am I talking about? In reality, I knew exactly what I was talking about. It was just too big of a concept for other people to grasp. Mm -hmm. And I finally said, "This I've been given this vision for a reason, and I'm going to do it. I don't care if everyone thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> so basically, that is an experiential place that has, it has tiny homes on it. It's going to also have natural homes on it. And people can rent and come and stay here and experience this glorious place. It's also a place that's based on self-sufficiency, self-sustaining, reducing the carbon footprint, and building a farm-to-table uh, lifestyle, plant-based lifestyle. It's also about supporting the arts and natural craftsmen and having galleries and events that promote and support that industry. Uh, my long-term goal is to be able to give scholarships in those fields to help uh, people in that space. If Which, you were, by the way, well, I me, go, ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, no. I don't want to forget to say this because I just launched this the other day. I am now giving scholarships away to my marketing and branding services because I thought, why am I waiting for that? I can do this now. So I just wanted to get that out there. because No, I'm no, no. I'm glad that. you did that. I didn't mean to interrupt you. But I, w one question that came to mind yeah. as you were talking about that. If you could go back 20 years and talk to and, and sit down and have a cup of coffee with Tammy 20 years ago, oh. do you think all these things that you're living now would have been possible to Tammy in 2000? If you could have gone back and sat with her and said, hey, this is how life is going to be in 2021. Do you think that Tammy would have thought that these things were possible? No, mm -mm. no, mm -mm. but the, the, the idea of going back and talking to myself would never work, right? Because the, I know the mindset and where I was at that point, and there would have been no getting through, but what I do do instead is I tell any young adult that will listen to me how to do what I did. Um, so I use that once I understood where I was going wrong and what was happening, I do that with my own two boys, you know, my message to them, their whole life has been pursue your passion at all costs. Well, and, and the reason I asked that is, and Tammy, I, I've asked that a lot and I've asked it of myself because I think the older we get, the more philosophical we get, the more we say to ourselves, boy, um, and the old saying, you know, if I had known them what I know now, you know, if, if, if I could go back 20 years and have a conversation with myself, mm. I, I probably would be a little more belligerent with myself. And I would say, listen, yeah. uh, you don't know nearly as much as you think, you know, yeah. you know, you got to treat that woman you're married to way better. Yeah. You got to be a more involved dad. You've got to take care of your health. You, you know, I would really just line him out and just yeah. be like, look, dude, you, you're met. Be, and, and I think, and Tammy, I love what you said there about passing that on to your own boys. Yeah. I, I have a, a soon to be 21 year old son. And, and I think the older I get to, the more that I want to pass things on to, to my son. How important is legacy to you and moving forward? Because I hear it in your voice. I see it and you'll see it as, as if you're watching it on YouTube. When, when she was talking about that, your, your facial expression changed a little bit. You were, you were, you were really like this now going forward is how I define myself in what I can pass on to my boys, yes. what I can leave with other people. How important is legacy to you now? Uh, legacy is everything. My core offering is called legacy. 
right? It is, it's, it's about a legacy, it, you know, it's life, it's legacy infrastructure for entrepreneurs. That's my core offering. That's my big product. Um, legacy is everything. That's part of what we bought here. I mean, I have regular meetings with my boys. They are a part of the decisions because ultimately this is their legacy. So when there's things going on, they're on the family call and we are saying, here's what's going on. What's your input? This is your legacy. This is going to be yours. What do you have to contribute? What do you want to say? You know, what are your thoughts? Uh, so it's super important. Uh, but, you know, being able to go back to myself 20 years ago, the main reason I would have never been able to listen to anything that I said was because I was still stuck in a scarcity mindset. And a scarcity mindset is like having blinders on, you know, like a horse has those, those, those eye shields on and they can't see. That scarcity mindset will eat you alive. And so until you're able to break free of a scarcity mindset, you can't hear anything. And so that was huge. Wow. Well, I, I love that because, you know, a scarcity mindset doesn't realize what's possible. It just sees, like to your point, I love that with the, the blinders on what's in front of them. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to take me through the biggest obstacle that you overcame in your life and what the biggest lesson you learned from it was. So the biggest obstacle was really myself. And what I mean by that is I recently did a series of posts in my social media um, that talked about the 15 fears that I had to overcome. And so they all culminate really in just myself, right? Uh, you can't, they're intertwined with each other, those fears, right? You, you can't talk about, um, you know, fear of the unknown without talking about imposter syndrome. You can't talk about, you know, they, they're so interwoven with each other, right? And when you have, so for example, um, I, I had extreme perfectionism, which is really a problem, but it's also a, a huge barrier. But why did I have that problem? I had that because I was always, uh, you know, didn't feel like I fit in. I didn't feel like I was accepted. So I, it drove perfectionism, right? So they're, they're highly intertwined. You, you have to address them all and move on from them all, which is really yourself. You are in your own way. So just getting past myself. <laughs> wow. And, and I think we, I think that would speak to a lot of us mm -hmm. is that we stand in our own way a lot of times and in, in not doing things. You know, I, people would tell me you need to do a podcast. And I was like, I, I think I spent a year, year and a half waiting for the perfect time yeah. to do a podcast yeah. instead of just doing it and getting out of my own way. Tammy, the last question I have for you, and you've been so gracious with your time. I, I've enjoyed our conversation. Take me through your biggest piece of intentional encouragement for somebody that's listening to this conversation. What's your biggest piece of intentional encouragement? My biggest piece of intentional encouragement would be to listen to yourself. So what I mean by that is you have to reach inside. You, we all have this connection with our higher power, right? For me, so it's God, some, you know, whatever that is for whoever, however that looks, you have an internal uh, two-way communication street. The messages are there, but we're so in the box that we can't open up and listen to them. And so you've got to listen to what those instructions are and what you're supposed to be doing. And um, that's, the, that's the most important piece. You've got to figure out how to listen to yourself. That I love that. Yeah. I love that because we don't do that enough. We really don't listen to ourselves enough. And it's that gut instinct or that something within us telling us not to do something or to do something. And we kind of ignore that. I love that. What a great way to end this conversation. Tammy, tell folks how they can connect with you, get your resources, um, if they're interested, schedule in time with you. Talk a little bit about how people can connect with you. Sure, sure. Thank you for that uh, opportunity. So, of course, you can go to my website, which is Tammy L. Collins. You have to add the L because there's an actress named Tammy Collins. So she, she of course, dominates the uh, the Google search. <laughs> hey, Tammy, I have a uh, – there is a gentleman. I'll tell you a very quick story about names. 
there's a guy that used to do Jacksonville Jaguars football games named Brian Sexton, and he was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. So, yeah, when, when I Google myself, he comes up first, you know. And then there's a dude in New Jersey that does Irish dancing. He's like the Michael Jordan of Irish dancing. So, Tammy L. Collins, how else can people connect with you? Right. Okay. So, of course, on social channels, right? Um, LinkedIn, Tammy L. Collins, you know, on Facebook, Tammy Collins. Uh, I do a lot in social media uh, because I have a lot to share. And, you know, I, I teach a lot on on how to grow organically in social media. So I speak a lot, and that's a topic that I get asked to speak on a lot. Uh, but right now I'm offering uh, some new things. I'm actually getting ready to shake it up a little bit. I'm, I just introduced this scholarship. I offered 35 scholarships to people uh, to be able to work with me that maybe wouldn't normally have the opportunity uh, normally. Um, and that was a really important piece to me because I'm so passionate about helping people that I needed more ways to help the people that really truly need that help. You know, having done work with universities and colleges and nonprofits and every industry you can imagine, I want to reach the people who really want to connect with their passion and I need to give them that opportunity. So I just launched that and uh, you know, you can just send me a message, go to my website, send me an email, you know, it's Tammy at TammyLCollins.com and let me know you're interested. I'll get the application information over to you. And uh, Live Your Passion. Live Your Passion is a program where I actually teach you how to actually uncover your passion. More importantly, how to build a roadmap to get there, to make them a reality. Um, and that's an actual system that fills the voids of several other systems out there that claim to help you accomplish your dreams, your passions, but they're missing the how piece. Yeah. And so that, that's the big magic thing that I uncovered is the how. So those are some things I have going on right now. And of course, I, I have a, a product called Love Your Brand, which is where I help you develop your brand. It's unlike any other branding process out there. Uh, I use a lot of psychological um, tactics to really help uncover what it's, what your brand is, how to package it, how to present it, who the audience is, all that great stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> TammyLCollins.com. If you want to, to connect with her, connect with her on her social channels, all these other things. Tammy, you've been awesome. We, we've struggled through some technical difficulties, not unusual here in West Virginia. You understand. <laughs> but again, I so appreciate you joining me today on the Intentional Encourager podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. My thanks as always to producer Bryce Sexton and technical advisor Matt Means. And of course, the ultimate thanks goes to the Lord Jesus Christ, who provides intentional encouragement every day through his word. If you're not subscribed to the Intentional Encourager podcast, hit the subscribe button wherever you get podcasts so you don't miss an exciting episode where you can get encouraged and stay encouraged. And remember, anyone, anywhere, at any time, any place can be an intentional encourager.